American Girl and Molly Learns a Lesson, a school story, chapter three. The garage was cold, especially compared to the warm kitchen. It was dark, too, because the only light came from the door at one end of the storage room and a window at the other end. The girls couldn't stand up straight except in the very middle of the storage room because the ceiling was sloped, just like the sides of a tent. The storage room smelled of dust, mothballs, and dried up paper. It was filled with things wanting to be fixed up, thrown out, or needed again. There was a big trunk with one latch broken, boxes full of books and games with pieces missing, a tarnished tennis trophy, a chest of drawers with a mirror on top that made you look green and speckled, a box labeled curtains too short, and a rolled top desk with no drawers. Everything looked ghostly because everything was covered with a gray blanket of dust. The girls had pushed two old love seats together face to face right under the window. The love seats were not very comfortable because the springs and padding were falling out of the bottom of them, but they had high curved backs, so when they were pushed together, they made sort of a boat that floated in a dusty sea. Linda climbed aboard first. Knitting, she groaned. I'm going to be terrible at this project. I hate knitting. Everything I ever knitted came out looking like a piece of chewed string. Oh, I think knitting is fun, said Susan, and socks are cute. Have you ever knitted a sock? asked Molly. Well, no, said Susan, but I've seen people do it. Yeah, well, it's hard, said Molly, and I've watched Mrs. Guilford do it. You have to use three needles sometimes and count stitches and purl and turn the heel and lots of other complicated things. There they are discussing it. Susan looked at Molly for a while. I bet you don't like it just because it's Allison's idea, she said. You're jealous because Allison won the multiplication bee and Miss Campbell gave her the gold badge today and you did the worst of anybody. It's not true, said Molly. It is too. It is not. It is too. Cut it out, said Linda. It doesn't matter whose idea it is. I still can't knit. I think we should do another project, said Molly. We can't, said Susan. All the girls are doing socks. It's our Linda Hand project. Miss Campbell would be mad at us. Everyone would be mad at us if we didn't do socks. Listen said Molly. Those girls are crazy if they can each knit even one pair of socks by Monday. They can't possibly do it. The whole third grade will look terrible. They'll be grateful to us if we do another project. Miss Campbell will be proud of us. Susan was doubtful. Well, I don't know. Look, you want to win the contest, don't you? Yes, but, well, believe me, there's no way the third grade girls could ever win by knitting socks. It's up to us. We have to do another project and win the contest for the third grade girls. Molly was firm. You make it sound so easy to win, said Linda. What other project can we do that would be so great? Build a fighter plane or something? Susan giggled. We would become spies. We could become spies and go on a mission and steal top secret information from the enemy. Hey, said Molly. That's it. We sort of could be secret agents. What do you mean? asked Susan. Well, said Molly, we're secret agents because nobody knows what we're doing, right? Just us three. And our mission is our project, only instead of stealing information, we can collect something. Something like... Tops! Bottle tops, interrupted Linda. Get it? Top secret will be the top secret angels. Angels. Agents. Agents. Yes, said Molly, that's it. We'll collect bottle tops for scrap metal. They'll use scrap metal to t make tanks and battleships and things, so it's good for the war effort. We'll collect at least a hundred bottle tops, and we'll surprise everybody in school on Monday, and we'll win the contest, and Miss Campbell will be pleased with us. Top secret agent, said Susan, just like in the movies. We can wear matching clothes, you know, spy clothes, dark pants, dark shirts, and send notes in secret code and have a secret hideout. Right here, said Molly, this can be our secret hideout. We should have a secret handshake, too said Linda, and we can never show anybody what it is. And we can't tell anybody what our secret project is, said Molly. We have to be sworn to secrecy. Okay, let's swear, said Linda. Come on, a solemn oath. She raised her right hand. Molly and Susan did too. I promise never to sell, tell anyone. Shh, Molly interrupted. I hear something. What is it, asked Susan. An enemy spy? Molly waved her hand to be quiet. She crept over to the window. It's Allison. Allison Hargate is knocking on the kitchen door. 
I want to see, said Linda. She joined Molly at the window. Get down, Molly commanded. She and Linda knelt by the window. Hey, look, said Linda. Allison has a big white envelope in her hand. They looked down at Allison from their hideout. She saw Mrs. Guilford come to the door, wiping her hands on the apron. Allison showed Mrs. Guilford the envelope, and Mrs. Guilford nodded and squinted up at the garage, then pointed right at the window. The girls ducked. They heard footsteps coming toward the garage. She's coming this way, whispered Linda. She's coming to find us. Quick, hide, Molly hissed. But Susan said, hurry up, ordered Molly. If she sees us, it will ruin everything. She slithered under one of the love seats. Linda hid behind a trunk. Susan knelt in a corner, then popped up like a jack-in-the-box and ran over to hide under the roll-top desk. Molly's heart was pounding. It smelled musty under the couch, and the broken spring dug into her back. After what seemed like a long time, she heard the door open, and she could see where Alice, all she could see were Allison's feet. The feet came into the room and stopped. Molly? Molly held her breath. The feet hesitated, then turned and went out the door. Molly could hear them hurrying down the stairs. All her breath came out in one big sigh. Oh, the coast is clear, she said. Then she wiggled out from under the love seat like a snake going backwards. Linda went back to the window and reported on Allison's movements. She's knocking on the door again. Wait, no, she isn't. She's not knocking. She just, She's just leaving that envelope stuck in the doorknob. I guess she's scared to talk to Miss Guilford again. Now she's running away down the driveway. Linda turned away from the window. She's gone. Well, I don't see why we had to hide, huffed Susan. She had dust in her hair and a dirt streaked across the back of her, back of her coat. It's only Allison. Allison's our friend, but she's not a top secret agent, Molly explained. If she saw us up here, she'd ask what we're doing, and pretty soon our whole secret project wouldn't be secret anymore. It wouldn't be a surprise. It wouldn't be anything at all, and we'd just be like everyone else. Remember, we promised to keep it secret. Come on, said Linda. Let's go. I can't wait to see what's in that envelope. She was already halfway out the door. Molly and Susan followed close behind into the chill November twilight. Mrs. Guilford had already turned on the light next to the kitchen door. The girls huddled under it as Molly opened the envelope and pulled out the card. It's an invitation, she said. Ooh, let me see, said Susan. And she stood on tiptoe tip -toe and leaned over Molly's shoulder. It says, you are invited to a knitting bee to work on your socks for the Linda Hand Contest from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock tomorrow at Allison's house. Lunch and other refreshments, too. Bring your own yarn and needles. Molly's hands were stiff and cold. Susan took the invitation for her, her and held it under the light. Gee, I bet that will be fun, she said. A knitting bee at Allison's house. Probably great refreshments, too, said Linda. Oh, I don't know, said Molly. I don't think it will be great. All they do is sit and knit, 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 and sit all day. I think we have more fun collecting bottle tops. Well, I want to go home and see if I got an invitation, too, said Susan. I'm cold, said Linda. I'm going home, too. Okay, said Molly. Meet me back here at 9 o'clock sharp tomorrow morning. Linda and Susan waved goodbye and hurried off into the gray night. Molly looked at the invitation one more time, then crumpled it up, put it in her coat pocket, and went inside.